Welcome back to Girls Next Level, guys. We are here with the Halloween episode. And originally, we we're going to put this out on Halloween because Halloween's a Monday. But then we know that a lot of you guys don't listen to the episode the day it comes out. And we right. didn't want you to feel like you didn't have time to bask in the season because that's what we like to do. So, totally. We're here a week early getting in the Halloween spirit. We're going to tell you about all our ghost stories at the mansion, why it was haunted, the Halloween party craziness, all that stuff. But how was your week, Bridget? What have you been doing? Halloween stuff? Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, I was, when I saw that one of our episodes was going to fall on Halloween, on actual Halloween day, I was like super excited. I was like, we definitely doing a Halloween episode. Yes. Not like we wouldn't have anyway, but I was super excited. But then you're right. Like, people need time to bask in it. They so do. It's, it's good to do it early. Get you in the spirit. And then you can listen to it all week long. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be stuck with a Halloween episode in November. I mean, we might, but not everybody. So. Right. But my week was good. Um, I went to a, so I had a really hard decision to make a million years ago. Well, I shouldn't say a million years ago, months ago, <laughs> which seems like a million years ago. AKA a million years ago. Yeah. Um, Nick's aunt bought everyone tickets to the opening Kings hockey game, which we love going to the yeah. hockey games. And um, not only that, but it was three people's birthdays. Mine, her, uh, our cousin's uh, wife, and the aunt's birthday. All three of us were having mm -hmm. birthdays. So it was like this kind of big family event, like eight of us going to celebrate three birthdays and go to the opening of the Kings game. Mm -hmm. So, okay, yeah, totally in for that, excited about it. Then, like, a week before the Kings game happens... I get an email inviting me to the Halloween Inns premiere at the Chinese Theater. So did you go? <laughs> no. Oh, no. I had to go to the Kings game. I mean, they don't say had to as in like I didn't want to. Yeah. But I missed the premiere. Oh, that sucks. But did you do other stuff for Halloween? Yes, of course I did. So I finally went to Not Scary mm -hmm. Farm. I'm going to tell you, that is one of my favorite ones. Well, I think their haunted houses are better than Universal. Do you? Yeah, they're just a little more inventive, I think. I think they're a little more imaginative, and they do better things with, like, the um, special effects and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's not as commercial. Like, Universal has, no, don't get me wrong, I love Michael Myers. I love, you know, some of the commercial properties that they have yeah. and that they use. Killer in clowns things. from outer space. Yes. <laughs> um, but I, all, I feel like there's something more scary to it when it's, it's not commercial. Like, it's not like a, something you totally know or are familiar with. Yeah, for sure. So that was really fun. Um, and then, of course, I have Universal still coming up, which is great. And, uh, yeah. So, oh, okay. I hit a 1,000 rides on Peloton. What, is that a lot? I am so clueless about Peloton. <laughs> Wait, I shouldn't say rides. I shouldn't say rides. I hit a thousand workouts. It's a lot. Like I'm oh, in the cool. comma club. That's what they call it. Ooh, elite. But I was doing a ride, and there was um, they I, I, they have Halloween themed rides. They also have Star Wars themed rides. I they did do? one. Yeah, I did one because it was under the category of Halloween, and I didn't. I saw she was dressed up as Princess Leia, but uh -huh. like. I didn't like realize it was going to be all Star Wars themed, but it was. And I thought, oh, oh if Holly fun. wanted to do Peloton, this is her ride. Yeah, right here. for sure. <laughs> but um, one of the things that they brought my attention to in that, like you learn things from doing Peloton, uh, was that there is a um, a song by Blondie that I used to love. Well, I still love it, but mm. it's called One Way or Another. Uh -huh. And they were, and I was like, why is this on the Halloween soundtrack? That's so weird. Then they were like, have you ever listened to the words of this song? This like might be one of the scariest songs ever. And so I, I was like, what? And I started listening to the words, and I went and I went and printed them to tell you. It says, one way or another, I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna win you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna win you. I'm gonna meet you. And then, and then it says, I will drive past your house, and if the lights are all down, I will see who's around. And then she goes in to say, like, I'm going to find you, I'm going to meet you, I'm going to, all that again. And then it says, and if the lights are all out, I'll, I'll follow your bus downtown to see who's hanging out. And then, like, I'm going to get you and all that stuff again. And then I'll walk down the mall, stand over by the wall where I can see it all, find out who you call. I mean, it's giving me chills. That is straight stalker. It'll lead you to the supermarket checkout, some specials, and rat food get lost in the crowd. Rat food? 
It's like giving me chills. And so Ew. I looked it up. I'm like, why is this like so freaky? Like, why? It, like, was it cool to be a stalker? Yeah. <laughs> but then I found out that she wrote it based on the stalker that she had. <gasps> Ew. Creepy, I never knew right? That. So that was my uh, Halloween lesson. Ew, that is so <laughs> creepy. So that was kind of my, my week in a nutshell. Yeah. I went on a tour of downtown for this news segment that I think I told you about. It was like a local news thing. And we did like a haunted downtown tour, which included like the Biltmore and the Cecil Hotel and places you might be Wait, did you get to go inside? Not the Cecil. Oh. Because they're like hating on haunted stuff right now, I think. Oh. They got their faces. Yeah. So um, they need to get back to their roots. So we were doing that. And then we went to a third one. I'll tell you off mic, but I don't want to say what it is. But we went to a third one that I had never heard of really? and has a crazy history. So I told Zach about it, so now they're going to investigate it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it was a productive day. But not so productive. I was wearing a witch's cloak, as I do sometimes. And, you know, downtown, like, L.A. is not great with their unhoused population. And downtown reeks of piss. Oh, my God. Like, you can't so walk anywhere without just being inundated. And, you know, the... My friend, the producer of the show, was like just kind of joking around about, oh, you're going to have to burn that cape. But I didn't really think it was dragging on the ground or anything, so I thought I was okay. Oh. But then, like, I had a heart out at two, so I jump in my Uber, and I realize, like, I can smell myself. And when you can smell yourself, you know it's bad. And I'm like, do I smell, like, piss right now? Oh, my God. And then the Uber driver slowly starts to crack the windows, and I'm like, <gasps> so embarrassed. So my Uber rating has probably plummeted to, like, a two- Oh my God. <laughs> so your cape was just like soaked in pee. Yeah. So I made that poor Uber driver suffer all the way from downtown to Hollywood Hills with a piss stained robe. Ew. Did you burn it then? I threw it out. Yeah. yeah. It was bad. Yeah. It was so bad. Nick and I were looking into getting married at, as you know, the mm -hmm. LA theater right in downtown on like 6th and Broadway, I think uh -huh. it is. And, um, or it's on Broadway. I don't know the cross street is but um when we went up to go do our walk through there were literally people like sleeping on the sidewalk in front of it that it smelled like urine so bad yeah and i'm thinking okay so all our guests have to park in a parking garage down the street and walk this gauntlet and in through like all I, like there's no way i can get rid of the pee smell on the Adventure street it's your time i know and i'm like <laughs> do i really want that to be the start of our day once you walk through the doors it's amazing mm -hmm. like it's the perfect perfect place but you just have to get there first yeah it's a lot mm -hmm. and we went to madame leota's dinner me and my kids oh how'd that go they liked it they were really good forrest was so hyper though and he's in this phase where he thinks he's like jim carrey Pee Wee herman <laughs> and there was a host standing by the host stand kind of like a young Younger guy not somebody who looked like a grandpa but I walked for to the bathroom and then we walked back in and he races up to the guy behind the host, host stand jumps onto his arm hangs like a sloth and goes grandpa I love you grandpa and it was so random and the guy just froze and he was like what's going on it was so funny it was random is he just like funny like that or yeah okay like he he just is coming up with these skits all the time and Interesting. random stuff. Yeah. Have you seen Pearl? No. What is that? It's a horror movie. You have to go no, see I it. No, I don't even heard of it. Have you seen X? No. Oh my God, you have to see it. So X is about these people in the 70s and they're filming a porn and they go to this like Texas Chainsaw Massacre style property that they're like airbnb it on and then you know the older couple that owns the property aren't too happy when they find out they're filming a porn chaos ensues but then Pearl is like the prequel about the old lady that lives there oh. and it's set in like the 1918 flu pandemic and it's just so beautifully shot like really? it's gorgeous and just like for me art direction is everything in the movie i could watch the worst movie but if the art direction is good i'll love it and it was just so pretty to look at and just the style of it and everything you have to see it wow how have i not even heard of this? i don't know it's like all over tiktok i felt like the weekend it came out everyone in the world like clearly i was on the pearl algorithm yeah i felt like everyone in the world had seen it but me oh did you go to the theater yeah is it only in the theater? Yeah. Well, I guess. But that's X what I... is out on like, you know, Netflix. Oh, and whatever. that's the first one. Should yeah. you watch X first? I think so. Okay. Pearl is the prequel, but sometimes it's better to see like the middle one first. Yeah. 
okay, well, now I know what I'm going to make Nick go deal with me either later tonight or tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so, should we talk about our costumes? I know for those of you listening, you're not going to see them, but if yeah. you're on our Patreon, you'll see our costumes today. I am in my most basic, boring costume. It's my Ravenclaw outfit. So it's like a headband, robe, tie, shirt. Because I couldn't find my Bride of Chucky costume. I have no idea where it is. I looked for it in Vegas, couldn't find it. Looked for it here, couldn't find it. And I had the wig and everything. That's weird. Like, because, well, I almost called you last night and said, you know what, we can make it, though. Like, I have a white dress that's, mm -hmm. you know, kind of lacy and whatever. I have a veil. And I have a leather jacket. But I have the wig and everything and the necklace. But you don't need the wig. Like, you could do your own hair. Yeah, I could. It's too long, though. It's too long, but... Maybe I mean, you could, like, pin it up in, like, a sly way. No one would know. I mean, this isn't really Chucky <laughs> yeah. fair. Either. That's true. <laughs> it's my version of Chucky. Yeah, we do long hair. Um, so I am Chucky. I did Chucky a few years back, like, maybe five years ago. And I went to, like, a private actually Rich Corral's party who yeah. we're going to talk about today, but it was a party at his house, which he throws phenomenal Halloween parties. Um, no one recognized you, right? Nobody. That's so, the best. Yeah, like I got invited. It's just at his house, but there was a lot of mansion people who I hadn't seen in a long time, but that still wasn't really excuse. It was more of my costume. So I had the red wig, or I guess it's more orange wig on, and all my face wounded up and bloodied, and the outfit on, and I brought my friend Lorraine, and we went to Rich's party, and everyone just looked at me like I was this weird person they'd never seen before. Like, people that I've known for years did not know who I was. Isn't that the best? Because then you see how people react to just normal humans when they don't know it's you. Yes. And sometimes that can show people true colors oh it's it, not cute it did <laughs> like I remember um one time when I was married my husband had like a company party at his house and I wore for Christmas and I wore like the Ralphie from Christmas story rabbit onesie oh, cute. and no one thought it was me at first not that they couldn't see it was my face or anything but it's just I think they saw the outfit from a ways away and it was I think people thought I was like working the party so it was like everybody averted their gaze it was like when you walk past like the mall kiosk people in the mall <laughs> and you don't want to get the sales pitch like everybody yeah. was like avoiding so hard it was yeah. funny that's hilarious. <laughs> it's really interesting how people treat you when they don't know you or don't recognize you. Yeah. It um, says a lot. But I had so much fun at that party. But the costume didn't really get a ton of play. Like, I did, you know. Like, no was, pictures and stuff. We did some stories, but, you know, mm -hmm. those are gone. Yeah. And, like, yeah, I just didn't get a lot of playtime. So I was excited to do it again. So when you were like, oh, I was, I was thinking about doing my Bride of Chucky, I'm like, yes, I'll yeah, resurrect my Chucky finally. costume. Only problem is most of it's in storage at my parents' house. Mm -hmm. I didn't have time to go get it. So I kind of had to, like, I don't know, do a... a different version of it but it's still good yeah i wonder if we'll get any haunted activity today like we did on the slumber party episode oh my god we have to tell them what happened yeah so we were recording a slumber party episode which is the bonus podcast we do for our patreon and all of a sudden we were in my living room and all of a sudden we hear this like clanking on my bookcase and it was like, like a knock sort of it was like a but yeah. it was loud it was like like kind of like that yeah and then i looked out i was like i'm gonna go outside to see if something's outside making noise nothing was but it sounded like it was coming from inside. I just went outside to like cover my bases. Yeah. But it kept knocking. Yeah. And you can hear it in the recording. Yeah, so. and people were like, oh my God, I hear that, that's so scary. Yeah, I hope we get something like that today, but I feel like when I ask for stuff, it never happens, so oh, we'll no. see. Oh no, I was gonna say, let's ask for it to happen, but maybe we shouldn't. Okay, yeah, you really shouldn't make those noises today. <laughs> I know, we have to keep it so quiet for the podcast. <laughs> yeah, don't interrupt us, we're really busy. What was that? <laughs> I don't think that was a ghost thing. I think that was somebody outside, outside but I don't know. Let me go look around. Wait, that was a slam. I'm I know, worried about my car like outside now. Landscapers or anything. Sometimes you hear stuff around the street. Not often. Wait, okay, you guys. She just went to go check really quick. Peek out the windows. See what's happening outside. Do you see anybody out there? I don't see anything. There's nobody here. Okay, well, we'll just... Keep our eyes and ears peeled. See how it goes. Because we don't want anything happening. <laughs> Interrupting us again. <laughs> um, okay, so this is our Halloween episode, and I wanted to start with, like, Halloween when you were a kid. Like, what was it like growing up for you? It wasn't very exciting. Of course, I loved Halloween like every kid does, but I lived out in the middle of nowhere in Alaska, so there wasn't, like, 
a lot of stuff you could buy really like we'd go trick-or-treating and everybody's costumes were really like homemade and janky but <laughs> so we had fun but it wasn't anything like elaborate or spectacular or anything like that I just remember growing up in the 80s that was during like the whole scare where they were like watch out that people are putting pins in the oh like razor candy. blades in the yeah, apple or razor something. blades in the apple <laughs> or I had a black cat at the time so I always kept her inside oh, because yeah. Satan worshippers might get the black cat which I don't think would have happened in the town of like a hundred people I lived in but still I don't know. Maybe there's some weird people out there. You know what? I think probably. <laughs> <laughs> that might be where it happens. Yeah, exactly. Because I feel like it doesn't happen here. But I do think that uh, like adoption centers and things like that are really careful about not adopting out black cats during the month of October. That's or at least that's what, what I've heard. heard. Yeah. So that's kind of scary and crazy. Uh, what was your like favorite tradition? Did you guys carve pumpkins and stuff? Or was it hard to get pumpkins there? I don't remember doing, I mean, we would do pumpkins here and there. It was mostly just all about trick-or-treating and, like, what kind of candy you were going to get. And you were always pissed when somebody was handing out raisins. Ew, I forgot about the ra those little mini raisin packs. Yeah, that was a craze you in the 80s. You guys don't do that. Yeah, no, you're not doing anybody, you're not saving anyone from diabetes. <laughs> no, not... those probably have just as much sugar as any I think so, candy. too, yeah. I think, I think so. Okay, do you have a favorite costume from when you were a kid? No, because they were super, super janky, but I do have a favorite candy that they don't make anymore. And that's the, they used to have this thing called Mr. Bones, and he came in a plastic coffin. Oh. And they were little sweet tart bones. You'd yes. get the skull and the whole skeleton. They'd be separated, and you could, like, put them together. That was by far my favorite candy, and I hate it that they don't make it anymore. Have you checked online or, like, the vintage candy stores and stuff? They don't make that one. There is a company that makes like a modern version, but it's not really the same. Oh. And it's not something that's really like super readily available to buy like Mr. Bones was. But he was cute. Everything about him, like the coffins were like cute colors. Everything about it was good. Yeah, I sort of remember that. I don't remember ever getting that in my trick or treat bag though. Like it was always like the basic candies and stuff. But I do remember seeing those. That was the exciting one to get. Like if you got a Mr. Bones, you were golden. Yeah. Well, for me, we, uh, so we lived way out in the country too, so mm -hmm. there was no trick-or-treating. I mean, like the, it, you just would not trick-or-treat there. There's not even sidewalks. There's, I mean, there's ditches, you know, it's yeah. like a scary road, country road. So, but we would all go to my grandma's house and I grew up with like a ton of cousins. I have 12 uh, cousins that we were, all, and a lot of us were really close in mm -hmm. age, especially all of us girls. And so we would all gather at my grandma's house, and it felt so there's something cool about being at your grandma's house at nighttime. Because it's what about the cousin that got the stigmata? Yeah, well, that's later in life. <laughs> okay. That was when we were doing the. She was there, yeah. and um, yeah, that was from playing the Ouija board. Yeah. Uh, we could get into that story, too, if you want, but, um, <laughs> but no, this is just Halloween. We didn't play Luigi board on Halloween. We just went to my grandma's house at nighttime. Everyone met there, and then um, once everyone was there and we were all ready, we would, like, go in a huge group, and, like, our my, our, my, my mom and my aunts would just follow behind, and we would just run amok through the whole, like, every street that we could get to as Fun. much as we could, and we would just be, like just driven for candy like you did, couldn't stop us then we go back to my grandma's house and we like dump out our candy and see what we got and so excited and then our parents would be like it's time to go or it's bedtime yeah <laughs> didn't you have like a corn maze too that we went to on girls next door oh okay so that was pr leading up to uh -huh. halloween yes so there's it was called phillips farms and it's kind of out in the country well everything's very agriculture and country <laughs> where i grew up except for inside the city of lodi um so yeah, and it has like a corn maze, not a big one, just like mm -hmm. a little one. And what they did more for, it was like set up hay in a maze kind yeah. of. And then they had like, and I used to think they were scary when I was little, but like these little sheds, like a shack, and you would push a button and then these crickety old like characters would like come out on a slider and be like, ee -hee 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 -hee. Oh my God. And I just funny. thought it was so cool. <laughs> or like you'd push another one and the alligator would go. I remember the alligator was still there when you went. <laughs> And then, of course, it was a pumpkin patch, and then we'd pick out our pumpkins, and we always carved pumpkins, and my mom would always uh, roast the seeds, which I always thought yes, was fun. Yes, I still do that. You know what one tradition that I always used to do as a kid, but I never liked it, but I just felt like it was one of those things that you just have to do, and now as an adult, I'm like, I just don't like this, and I'm not doing it anymore. What? <laughs> but there's people that are going to kill me for this. What? The... 
The Charlie Brown special. Oh, the Great Pumpkin. Yeah, no, I, I can see why you're not. Don't it, Charlie like Brown it. can be a little slow sometimes. It makes me depressed. <laughs> well, doesn't the Great Pumpkin like not even show up at the end? I don't even remember how it goes, but I the music. I don't even like the the Peanuts music. <laughs> like the best thing about the Peanuts is how weird they dance on the Christmas special. Have you ever noticed that they dance like Frankenstein and do like all these weird dances? No, because I definitely. Trying to avoid like, it at no, all costs. Get me away from You know what peanuts. else used to play when I was growing up? I don't know if they still do this or not. Puff the Magic Dragon. Did I've you ever? S no. You don't know Puff the Magic no, Dragon? No, but I hate that song. It's depressing as hell. See, I thought they both were. They, were both, they both made me feel sad and yucky. And I'm like, I am not doing that. Those are not included in my traditions for Halloween anymore, period. That's why we're all in therapy now, this generation. <laughs> And then, of course, later in life, I'd have my own Halloween parties and all my themed things. I'm pointing to uh, some themed cupcakes and cocktails that I brought for today's little Halloween so party. So cute. I made, um, these are actually strawberry cupcakes, homemade. Delicious. With buttercream, vanilla frosting. They've got the pearl axe on top. Yeah, I put the little axes and knives, like, or it's a hatchet, actually, on top. And then I found this spray candy blood. And I sprayed them oh, with cute. blood. It doesn't look like spray now, but I thought that was a cool idea. No, I like it. And then the drinks are in these Skull Martini glasses. And I have the syringes with um, grenadine in it. And inside is like a, like a tonic, but it's for our calorie counting folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is um, zero calories, zero, but it is flavored. Um, cherry lime, and then I put a little shot of vodka in there, just a little, just a little shot of vodka. Yum. <laughs> so those are our adult Shirley Temples. Cute. For later. We better eat, we better drink those when we're done yeah. recording. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get off track. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I think that was mostly growing up and how it all went down. And then, then I moved to L.A. Yeah. So the Playboy Halloween parties were a big deal. Oh my God, can I say one thing before we get into them? Sorry. Yeah, no, say it, but I was going to have you take the lead on just what the parties are. Oh, well, I just wanted to say that I'm still bummed, and I know I said it in like our first episode, or maybe it was our second episode, but I am so bummed that I went there and tested for the first time, October of 98, like early October, and there was a poster in the Great Hall for the Halloween party coming up. Like, it was going to be, like, on the 28th or whatever day it was that year. And I wanted to go to it so bad. And I know now that if I would have just asked Hef if I could come back for that party, I absolutely would have been invited. And I didn't do it. And that was the first Halloween party he had. Do you think it would have been fun for you to go to a Halloween party before you were a girlfriend? Did you ever get to do that? I, yeah, I went to, well, okay, I, so I didn't did go to a Halloween things. party before, but I did Midsummers and stuff, so I feel like yeah. it would have been similar. But yeah, I would have been so excited to go to the Halloween party. I mean, don't get me wrong, I was excited to go uh -huh. to Midsummers the following year, or two years after that, whatever that was, I can't, can't remember right now. But, um, but Halloween, for me, would have been like, whoa. Yeah, absolutely. So the Halloween party was one of the two biggest parties he threw. He threw about five big parties a year, four or five. And the two big ones were Midsummer Night's Dream in August and then the Halloween party. So tell everybody kind of how the Halloween party was set up, what made it so special, why it was special at that point in time, because it was kind of the first of its kind. Yeah. So, okay, I think we told you before how people had to park at UCLA, parking structure, and check in and come up on a shuttle. Well, what was extra fun about that for Halloween is when you came up on the shuttle, the rolling hills, which turned into our slip and slides later, the rolling hills had like monster, it was all lit up, spooky, like it just looked like this gothic, well it is a gothic mansion, but like had red lights shining on it and stuff, and there would be monsters and stuff that would come and attack your shuttle as you drove up, like so pounding funny. on the windows <laughs> and stuff, so you're already getting scared before you, just as you come in the gates and then it pulls up and when you um, pull up into the like circle out front there's like a huge graveyard in the front front lawn and there's all these like monsters and goblins and like crazy things coming mm -hmm. after you the house is lit up like crazy there is a giant oh and this is people have asked this we may have already covered it in some of the Q&A but there is a giant tarp on the top of the mansion and 
people were wondering like why is there always a tarp with that ugly tarp thing on there it's because there is a giant animatronic gargoyle up there and uh, they uncover it during October and it literally flaps its wings it blows smoke I think its eyes glow red like and it's huge and it's heavy and it can't be moved once it's up there but they don't want it up in the LA elements all day all year long either because yeah. it would not last very long in the hot sun like that. We'll post a picture on our Patreon that we took with it, which is kind oh, of yeah. a really low quality picture, very. but there was one year we climbed up there to take a picture with it. Yeah, we literally went on the roof and got a picture yeah. somehow. I don't even know. I feel like they, they would never have let us do that, so I don't know how we got permission to do that. <laughs> yeah, we must have just asked to take a picture and then they showed us how to get up there, like a little narrow stairway yeah okay so there's so many areas so I told you about the the front rolling hills and the driveway coming up and then the um, front lawn then if you go past the front lawn out to the tennis courts the tennis court is completely like you wouldn't even know it was a tennis court it's completely tented off and there is the best haunted house in the world and I there's no way there's another haunted house that's even better than it ever and what's interesting about it too is like during this time period adult Halloween wasn't that big so this was really like the first of its kind Halloween party I think yeah I think so too like where it really became like the sexy Halloween like adult party yeah it's adult like, Halloween yeah um this how this haunted house was done by our friend Rich Carell um, and he would coordinate with Hef every year and they'd come up with the themes and get it all approved and it was legit. It was so good. <laughs> yeah. And I love Rich's backstory too. So Rich was one of the little kids on Leave It to Beaver and he would shoot on the Universal lot and at that time they were still making different shows and movies featuring like the Universal monsters like the Frankenstein and the Dracula and Mummy and things like that. And he would find in the dumpsters the props and stuff and he would go dumpster diving and start saving all these props and that's what started this collection he has now which wasn't it on display in LA like you could go see it. Oh it still is. It's oh called, okay, it's still up. Yeah it's called Icons of Darkness and it's on Hollywood Boulevard and you can walk through it and it's just a fraction of his display. Yeah like his collection's huge and that's what he would use to make the haunted house. Yeah yeah so it took like 20 minutes to go through the haunted houses. You know what I miss and I don't know why I can't find it. Remember when he made the Playboy Halloween hats? Oh yeah <laughs> with the fanged bunny. Yeah, I don't know why I thought those were so funny, but I remember you had one once. It was just a black baseball cap with like an orange vampire Playboy Bunny logo, and then it said Playboy Halloween. And I don't know why I thought those hats were like so cool, but like I'm bummed I don't still have mine. <laughs> I'm sure I still have one, but it's definitely deep in storage. Somewhere. Yeah, like, he would make them for the crew that set up the haunted house. Yeah. And then they were like treasured when we have them. <laughs> For sure. If you want to hear more on Rich's uh, backstory and him and I talking about his like involvement with the Playboy Halloween parties and all that stuff, you can, I did do a Ghost Magnet episode on it. So Rich Corral, you can just find his name in there. I don't remember what episode number it is. Sorry. <laughs> I just wrote that down. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, okay, so that was the, the haunted house out there. Oh, and you know what was a fun experience too? So he was doing like this psycho scene where in the haunted house where there's like the shower with the woman like um, showering. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it looks like, it looks like a shower with like the um, shower curtain and you can see the image, like the shadow, the outline of a girl showering. And then, so that distracts you because you're looking that way. And then out of a closet, uh, the psycho killer comes out to kill you. But I got to do the girl showering silhouette. That was cute. It was so yeah. much fun filming that. So I had to wear like a nude bodysuit and we were down in the gym with like a green screen and I just had to act like I was like washing my hair and soaping <laughs> off, but like super exaggerated and so, so I'm the silhouette in that. That's fun. And I thought that was such a fun like little project to do. Um, okay, so then you go inside the house and everyone is directed into the dining room. So somebody on Instagram was asking me what the worst Halloween costume you ever saw at a party was. Hmm, that's tough. Mine was George Barris's. George Barris was this older guy and he would do like custom car stuff. He had like the Monsters coach and stuff like that. 
And so we knew him from doing scenes with him on the show. And he came to the party one year dressed as Robin from Batman and Robin. And just like all his junk was hanging out. You could see everything. Yeah, which fair is fair. Women go with their junk hanging out all the time. But I just wasn't prepared to see it on somebody that I like quote unquote knew in real life. And I was just like, ah, yeah, stuck with me forever. Um. Yeah, I don't remember like a worst costume. I mean, I remember that costume, and you're yeah. definitely right on that. But like other stuff, I should remember the good ones. Typically. What was your favorite? Oh gosh, uh, I remember, and this maybe this is bad, but I thought it was funny at the time. Somebody came with like cereal all over them, and like a knife, and they were oh, a serial, serial killer. killer. Yeah. I thought that was funny. Um, I remember. Kevin Burns, who was like the, we talk about him all the time, the producer of our show, he came dressed as the Munsters. Yeah, he, he would do really good makeup. He was like Grandpa Munster, Phantom of the Opera one year. Ah, oh God, there was just so many cute ones and, and fun ones. I just like how everyone gets in the spirit because sometimes, you know, in life people aren't good sports like that. But at the mansion Halloween parties, everyone got into it. Oh, and I remember Rich and Beth came one year and I didn't even know it was them. Like what they were they? totally... I don't even know what they were, but he had like this, um, it was like a warrior devil type thing. I don't know what the character actually was, but it was like fully, it was like full mask and everything. And like, Whoa. I was like, I don't know who you guys are. And they're like, yeah. you don't know, you don't know that. That's so funny. And I was like, ah, it's killing me. Literally. <laughs> Somebody else asked if Hef allowed trick-or-treaters at the mansion. I thought that was an interesting question. And they're really, I mean, it just definitely was not a practical neighborhood that anyone would have gone trick-or-treating in just because no. you have these huge properties that are like all behind gates and it would be a long walk in between like even one property to the next. And there and were the, no sidewalks or anything, so it'd be a yeah. little dangerous. And it's very dark. It wasn't like street lights. There was a little bit of light, but not a lot. But I find it hard to believe that there hadn't been people who tried. I bet there were, and we just never heard about it. Maybe. I bet there were people coming up on Halloween talking to the speaker, like, trick or treat, just to, like, try their luck. Hey, why not? <laughs> people used to come up and say all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, talking to The Rock. People are always asking me, too, if I ever met Anna Nicole Smith, and I met her at a Halloween party in 2004. Do you remember that? Yeah, I have a picture with her. And I feel, I feel bad because I don't have, like, a lot of details because I just met her so briefly. But I just remember she was really nice, very polite, and very tall. Yeah, and we also went to her birthday party. Remember? She showed up. Like, we, we finally gave up and we were leaving just as she was arriving. We have pictures from that night, too. Oh, was that, like, at a club on Sunset or some kind of place yeah, on Sunset? Yeah, I think Sunset? it was at Avalon, like, above the top when it was, like, Bar Bardot or whatever. Was that the night? Because Anna Nicole used to have that lawyer, Howard K. Stern. And he kind of like got in Hef's face and was like, hey, I didn't like that picture you ran of Anna on the cover because it made it look like she inherited all this money and she didn't. And Hef was just kind of like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember it. He was there. But I don't remember if he like, I don't remember him approaching. Yeah. <laughs> Super awkward. Well, one other um, tradition that we had, and we didn't just do this at Halloween time, but we made sure to do it at Halloween time, was our spooky adventures. But I feel like we've talked for so long, we don't even have time to go into our spooky adventures. We'll have to save that for, like, another time. I know. Well, next week it's still Halloween, so maybe we'll pick up a little bit where we left off. But we'll see. We'll see, yeah. So we will see you guys next week. Happy Halloween. Yeah, happy Halloween. I hope you all dress up and have a fabulous time.